Good morning. Good morning, Father. Welcome to Our Lady of Lords. Before we begin, if you would, make sure your phones are silent or muted. We welcome everyone watching via the live stream. We're grateful that you're with us as well. And we'll project the lyrics to the songs right on your screen. Here in the church, we'll project them right on the wall. You can sing today with our wonderful choir. And just a reminder of something I thought about. Christmas this year is on a Sunday, so you get two for one. Right? <laughs> however, however, the question of the collection, you don't get two for one. Right? You don't get two for one. So we have the Sunday collection and the Christmas collection. Okay? Did you get that? So every year that Christmas has fallen on a Sunday, I've hit the numbers, both numbers, perfectly. Okay, so I have a reputation to keep up. So need your support, so don't forget the four Sunday as well as Christmas when it comes to our celebration. Uh, I know when you decorate your homes, you probably uh, set up a nativity scene, a creche, right? And the center of the creche is Jesus. Very good. Learn something. Anyway, if you would like next weekend, you can bring your infant uh, Jesus to church and we'll bless them so then you can put them in your crash at home, okay? So just have to, if you haven't dug them out already from your decorations, do that. Bring it at any mass next Sunday and we'll bless your infant Christ, okay? I invite you now to stand, prepare your hearts and minds to receive the Lord in his word and sacrament. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. We take another step in this journey of anticipation, this journey of waiting during the season of Advent today. We, I hope at least, that you've had a chance to reflect on the first readings. Uh, I mentioned that whatever mass I had last weekend, I don't remember. I don't remember what I had for breakfast, so I... But, <laughs> but I, I mentioned every Sunday, the very first reading we hear is from the prophet Isaiah, and they are absolutely incredibly beautiful readings. And I hope that in between Sundays, you'll take it an opportunity in your prayer just to read it and to ask the Lord what he's trying to tell you at, through the words of Isaiah. Anyway, so today as we prepare to uh, celebrate Eucharist, we take a moment to acknowledge our faults, our weaknesses, 
and we stand before God and ask forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. A spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord and his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide a right for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse set up as a signal for the nations, the Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord.
justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. O oh God, with your judgment endow the Justice, the King's Son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flower in A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, that by endurance and by encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, then as Christ welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness to confirm the promises to the patriarchs, but so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. John the Baptist appeared, preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now, the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance, but the one who's coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. A few years ago, uh, about this time in December, I was visiting with some friends over in the East Valley, and they wanted to get a fresh Christmas tree instead of an artificial one, and so I went with them to a Christmas tree lot, which was actually just a few blocks from their house. It was run by a Protestant church there. But anyway, so we, we go to this Christmas tree lot and my friends, husband and wife, are looking for a tree. But I was distracted by this other couple who was also looking for a tree. And it was hard to tell, but I guess they were in their 50s or 60s, youngsters. Um, <laughs> and... It was funny because the husband would pull a tree out and stand it there so his wife could look at it and she'd say, oh no, 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 that, that, no. That one's too short and it's ugly, it's, it's no good. And so he'd go and get another one and, and she'd say, oh no, no, that one's got real short needles, those things will fall off in no time and they'll be all over the carpet. And so finally he p pulls out what I saw was the third tree. It could have been the tenth for all I know. <laughs> and, and he says, now this one is nice. He says, it's got a little space on this side here, but we can put that side to the wall and nobody will see it. And she said, a little space? You could drive a Mack truck through that thing. <laughs> well, by that time, my friends had settled on their tree and we left, but I would have given anything to stay there and see what they finally did. <laughs> But preparing for Christmas can be a rather anxious time in our lives. I think more so when we're younger, because uh, we want everything to be perfect. We gotta bake the cookies, we gotta send cards. We don't send cards very much anymore. I remember I used to laugh at my mother because if she got a card from somebody a day or two before Christmas that she hadn't sent one to, she was just crazy. She said, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? One year I actually sent a card to her with somebody else's name on it so that it would arrive 
on Christmas Eve just to watch the fun. But this type, the season can be one of high anxiety, whatever we do. I mean, we want, you know, the perfect tree, the perfect gifts, perfect cards, the meal's got to be perfect, everybody's got to be in a good mood. Whew. That's a lot of work. And I think, you know, the media and the types of programs they put on TV, you know, it shows families just happy as the devil, you know, the perfect little fire in the fireplace, beautiful new sweat, sweaters, everything is fine. And I don't know about you, but my family when I was a kid never looked like that. <laughs> well, the second Sunday of Advent, the church sheds light on a very, very anxious person, John the Baptist. John the Baptist came and for some reason he felt the burden of trying to clear everything up before Jesus came. And so he's baptizing these people and telling them, you got to repent, you got to change your ways. He takes on the Pharisees and the Sadducees and he tells them, you brood of vipers, I'm sure they appreciated that. But he wanted everything to be perfect for when Jesus came. He didn't understand at that point that his cousin Jesus was very happy with mess. I mean, Jesus was born in a stable. He must have known what the south end of a northbound donkey smelled like. <laughs> I mean, he came into this messy world precisely because it needed cleaning up. And John the Baptist, no matter how anxious he became, was not gonna, going to accomplish what only Jesus himself could do. Jesus came to clean up the mess. Jesus came to meet us right in the mess and to journey with us from there. Instead of cleaning house, Jesus actually went into the houses of sinners and ate with them, which was an incredible turnoff for the leaders of the people. Instead of coming for the perfect, he told us, I've come for the imperfect, because if everything was perfect, Jesus wouldn't have needed to come at all. This Christmas, for each of us, chances are it will not be perfect, and that's okay. For some of you, maybe your Christmas this Christmas you're spending alone for the first time because your spouse or a close friend has died. Maybe this Christmas, instead of a Christmas tree, the center piece in your living room is a hospital bed for a husband or wife for whom you're caretaking. I've seen a number of those, and I know Father John has too in the last weeks as we went to anoint people. Maybe you'll spend this Christmas visiting your husband or wife or some close friend in a nursing home. Maybe this year your kids or your grandkids won't be visiting you, and maybe they'll even forget to call you. Or maybe you won't remember that they did call you. <laughs> maybe this time of year because of losses in the past or whatever, maybe you'll just feel depressed and lonely and out of sorts. That's okay. It's not fun, but it's okay because that's where Jesus will meet you. Jesus will enter into the, the mess, if you want to call it that, of your lives. He will walk with you. He will be with you. You don't have to get all gussied up in order to celebrate Christmas. 
You can celebrate it even if you're in the dumps because Jesus is there. What greater gift could you want? We are preparing for a Christmas which will not be perfect, but Christ will be perfect. And he will meet you where you're at. He will bring you what you need. And he will stay with you. Because the scriptures from of old have always told us that when the Savior came, he would be Emmanuel, God with us. Let's stand now and profess the faith that we share. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, is incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. John the Baptist called people to repentance. He prepared a way for the Lord. We make these petitions as we prepare to welcome Christ into our lives. That the leaders of the church may continue to call people to turn away from sinful ways, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That men and women entrusted with authority will make justice flourish in our time, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That sinners may hear and take to heart the call to repent and to accept their mercy offered by God's only Son, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those in our community who are suffering rejection or loneliness may find the fullness of peace in the coming of our Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick and for all who have asked our prayer, especially Mark Spinato and Diane Charlevoix, may God's healing hand bring them comfort, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may see the salvation of God in his kingdom, especially Joseph Boso and Sandra Morford, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of Carol Voigt and Louise Voigt, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, when your only Son was to come into this world, we were given the hope of salvation. With that same hope, we trust you will grant our petitions, which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
And now pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise of the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus, your Son. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation so that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, <clears throat> we may <clears throat> merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We pray now with confidence to the Father in the way that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Please be with you. Please be with you. Please be with you. Oh, yes. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a few things. First of all, a reminder that Bernadette's Brew is open for business uh, immediately after Mass. Um, and this Thursday is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of Mary. That is a holy day of obligation for us as Catholics. It's also the, the title under which our country is placed with Mary of the Immaculate Conception. And so Masses here will be uh, the night before uh, the Vigil Mass at 4 o'clock. Uh, that's on Wednesday. And then Thursday, the day of the Immaculate Conception itself, both at 9 and 11. On December 10th, that's this coming Saturday, the Catholic Daughters of America will be hosting a cookie walk in Madonna Hall. Um, please look at the bulletin for information. I have no idea what that is, but <laughs> I'll walk for a cookie. I don't know. <laughs> um, a reminder also that the uh, new Our Lady of Lourdes app is available. I'm sure all of you just went right to it and got it on your phones last week, but just in case you didn't, and I didn't either. Uh, but anyway, it's available. Um, St. Vincent de Paul will be hosting this Christmas season an Adopt-a-Family program. Uh, help less fortunate families experience the joy of Christmas. And again, more details are in this week's bulletin. So please take a copy when you leave. The prayer of St. Michael. St. Michael, Michael, be our, our angel, angel, defend us of battle, be, be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.